good example of a real-world piecewise function is um, the tax bracket. Okay. I don't know how familiar y'all are with taxes, but income taxes are based on the level of your income. Not everybody. Might be a problem. Um, not everybody gets taxed the same rate. If you don't make as much money, you do not get taxed as great of a percentage of your income. So, just for example, let's say that they have one rate for people that make between zero dollars and thirty thousand dollars a year. You've got one rate for them, and then you've got a different rate for people that make between thirty thousand and a hundred thousand. I don't know if those are kind of jobless or kind of cut off numbers, but for example, you have a different rate for that group, and then you have a third rate for people that make over $100,000 a year. That is a piecewise function. It depends on which one you fall within determines which rate you are taxed at. So anyways, that's a real life example of a piecewise function. Let's look at uh, how we graph these, how we evaluate these functions, uh, and determine whether they are continuous. Okay, so the first part here, where this is always how piecewise functions are written. So if our x values are less than negative 2, then this function, x plus 5, applies. If your x values are greater than negative 2, then it becomes a negative 2x minus 1 applies. So if we are at, what is f of 3? You, say, you might say, well, I have two choices. Well, how do I know which one to plug it into? You don't plug it into one of those. you got to figure out, well, where does 3 fall within? Is it less than negative 2, or is it greater than negative 2? It is greater than negative 2. So we're just going to plug it into the second one. Okay, we're just going to plug it into the second one. So negative 2 times 3 minus 1, that's uh, negative 6 minus 1, which is negative 7. F of 3 here is negative 7. It is not 8. 8 would be the other piece of the function. F of negative 4. Again, you've got to figure out which one applies. Negative 4 is less than negative 2, so we're going to plug negative 4 into the first one. So negative 4 plus 5 is 1. F of negative 4 is 1. Well, what happens if they give us the boundary point? That's what I call that, the boundary point where it changes. That's when you look at which one has the equal to. So the second one has the equal to, so if you're asked what is f of negative 2, then you plug that into the second one. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Now, we can use these points to help us graph. Okay, Because we have these points, I can plot these points on my graph and it's going to help me uh, graph these functions. So one of my points is 3 negative 7, so I'm going to plot that point down here, I'm trying to keep everything color-coded. Uh, another point was negative 4, positive 1, and negative 2 is equal to 3. I'm going to use blue for that one because I used the second function with blue. All right, so that's just a few random points, though. We want to be able to graph this whole thing. So it changes at negative 2. To the left of negative 2, the slope is uh, 1. Okay, The slope is 1, and I know that I go through that point right there. So there are a couple of different ways that I can do this, but um, I can just start from that point right there and count a slope of 1 from that point. And that will allow me to graph that half of the graph. And I stop at negative 2. Now, technically, I should put an open circle there on the end. But if you count your slope from that point, a slope of 1, and what you end up running into, the other half of the function. The other piece has a slope of negative 2. So... Out the slope from either one of those and when you do that that's what the second part of the 
continuous function is like. So this is a continuous function. Continuous function means that if I start on the left side, can I draw this function without picking up my pencil? And I can. If you straighten this down at this point, I don't have to pick up my pencil and jump up here to get to the other line. This is a continuous piecewise function. Okay. <clears throat> because look at look what else happens. If we plug our boundary point, if we plug negative two into the other piece, yes, I know the other piece is not equal to, but if we plugged it into the other piece, we would also get three as an answer. That's where the point should be. It's not there technically for that piece, but that's where it should be. So if that point is the same for those pieces, then it's a continuous function. So this one kind of looks like an absolute value, but the slopes are not the same on both sides. They have different slopes, so it's not an absolute value function, but it, it's kind of close to it. All right, let's look at another one. G of x is defined as negative 3 when your x values are less than 3, and it is defined as 2x minus 5 when your x values are greater than 3. So if you want to know g of negative 4, negative 4 is less than 3, that answer is always negative 3. There's no variable to plug anything into. That answer is always negative 3. 0, g of 0, 0 is less than 3. So that's also negative 3. Let me go ahead and plot those points while I'm at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, negative 3, 0, negative 3. G of 3, well, that one has the equal to, so it's also negative 3. Okay? Well, I've got half my graph. Right? When x is less than or equal to 3, then it is always equal to negative 3. That's a horizontal line there at negative 3. So you have to graph the other part. Now, I have this vertical line over here because I think this helps some people. This is not technically part of the graph, but if you want to give yourself a visual, if you want to kind of lightly draw in uh, a dashed vertical line there to know that on this side of the line, I should have one function. On the right side of the line, I should have a different function. Um, it's just, it's a visual. Don't make it too dark because it's not like a very classy one or anything like that. It's just a visual to help you keep things straight. Okay? So, I didn't, I didn't plug in any values for greater than 3. This is how I would graph the second half of this graph. Okay? Even though the second part does not have the equal to, still plug in the number 3. Okay? Still plug in 3 into that function. Kind of like a hole. Remember when we found where the holes were, we went and plugged them back in, and then we put an open circle in that place. That's where the point should be. Um, so we've got 6 minus 5 is 1. So our point should be at 3, 1. I'm going to put an open circle right there. I'm going to put an open circle right there. Um, and really, from that point, once I have a point and I have the slope, I can just count the slope from that point, right? I can go up to... <laughs> over 1, up to over 1, so forth and so on, and there is the other half of my piece function. Okay. Now, the reason why we put an open circle there is because we can get infinitely close to 3 right here. We can plug in 3.000001, okay? Um, and that's going to give us a number that's very, very close to one. Maybe it's one or two, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but we can get infinitely close to that. So it's just easier to plug in that point and put an open circle in its place. Because that's where the point should be, but the function is not defined for that one. So this one's not continuous. Okay? Because coming from this side, we're equal to negative 2. And then we've got to jump up here to finish drawing our function. This is not a continuous piecewise function. Okay, because when we plug 3 into the first piece, it's negative 3. We're getting the same piece as positive 1. Okay, now piecewise functions can have three pieces. Okay, they can have three pieces. They can, I mean, they can have infinitely many pieces. Most of the time we just deal with two, but sometimes we do 
you have three. So let's look at this one. Um, H of negative two. Let's see where negative two falls. Negative two is less than zero, so we're going to plug it into the first piece. Okay, so we've got negative, negative two, plus four. Negative, negative two is positive two. Two plus four is six. So while we're in the habit of plotting our points while we're evaluating, let's go ahead and put that one on there. Negative two, six. <coughs> zero. Let's see here. Zero is still the first one, okay, because it's equal to zero for the first one. So we've got negative zero plus four. Well, there's no such thing as negative zero. It's just zero. So zero, four is our point there. H of 5, 5 is the middle one, equal to 5. So we've got 2 thirds times 5 minus 1. That's 10 thirds minus 1 expressed as thirds is 3 thirds. So that's 7 over 3. What are you doing without a calculator? Okay, 1 is 3 over 3, so 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 thirds. Seven thirds is what? Just over two? Two and a third? One, two, two, four, five, two and a third. There's that point right there. Um, and yes, I made this next one ridiculous just to prove a point. H of 100. Okay? 100 is greater than five. <coughs> it does not matter what it is, though. Your value is going to be two. Because that one's just constant. Um, so we can't really, we can't plot that on our graph right here, but that's okay. All right, so let's graph this. Negative x plus 4 when x is less than or equal to 0. Well, I have the point at 0, and I have a point to the left of it, so I can just draw my line through those two points, make sure that it has a slope of negative 1. Okay, now we've got to figure out this middle piece. We've got the right boundary. We have the boundary at 5. Let's find out what our point should be at 0. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 0, 2 thirds times 0 minus 1. So it's negative 1. It's an open circle because our point is not actually supposed to be there. Or it, it, not that it's not supposed to be there, but it, it's not defined. Okay. Um, and this is just going to be a line segment, okay? No arrows on this one. Um, okay, um, and then our last piece, when x is greater than 5, our function's equal to 2. So it may be a little kind of hard to squeeze in there. It doesn't meet... Okay, you've got an open circle there at 2, just below that point at 2 and 1 third. Um, and then it is a horizontal line from there to infinity. Okay, so this one's definitely not continuous. It has two places of, of discontinuity. There at 0 and at 5, it's discontinuous. So no, it is not continuous. From the last piece, when x is greater than 5, it's always equal to 2. So it's a horizontal line at 2. Yeah, you start, you start at, yeah, you start at the boundary on 5, and the line by is 2. That's an open, it doesn't necessarily make sense. That would be completely open circle. Okay, piece by functions, they're not that difficult, they're just a little, they're a little weird. Four, okay. Um, let's look at another three-part one. This one's a little different because look at that first interval. That first interval is from negative six to two. Then we had one 